Hey guys, what is going on and welcome back to a new video. Um, now in this video, I am going to be kind of doing something new. Um, I've done it in a couple of my past videos, but this is going to be mainly for um, things that are be coming out in the future. So basically, uh, we know that I'm doing my God of War playthrough still, and I'm playing some VR games still, you know, just still sticking to that. Um, but with E3 literally just happening, um, there's a lot of new games that I'd be willing to play. And um, it's sort of just up to you guys whether you would want to see those being played. So basically, um, the first game on my list. So the way that the list goes is I have um, five games that are going to be PC games. So you guys will easily be able to watch them and stuff like that. And then I have um, four games that are for PS4. And then I have one game that we literally know no information about at all. Um, all we know is that it's being worked on currently. So with that being said, um, I'm just going to go ahead and start the list, I guess. So the first two games on my PC list are basically games that I don't know much about. Uh, the first one being Anthem. Now at E3, we did get a new uh, sort of trailer into what's going to be in the game and a little bit behind the story. Um, but as I said, I don't know much about this game. So, you know, me talking about it is going to be very difficult. Um, but yeah, I know that it's being published, I guess, by e or EA. So. Yeah, we'll just kind of have to wait. I don't really know much information about it other than it's an EA game and uh, it's going to be on Origin as well as it's something kind of new. So the second game on our PC list is Just Cause 4. So again, just like before, I don't know much about this game. I know it's going to be continuing uh, the Just Cause sort of series. Now, I only played the first and second Just Causes. I kind of skipped the third one because I didn't really think that it would be too important. Um, I didn't really find any sort of motivation or really want to play the game. Although I heard some of my friends thought it was really good and a step up uh, above, you know, Just Cause 1 and Just Cause 2. But again, I don't know much about it, so we'll just have to see whether you guys want me to play that or not. The third game on our... PC list is Fallout 76. This um, was basically fully announced at E3. We got sort of a snippet that, uh, or I guess an announcement, um, or I guess it was kind of a leak about uh, Fallout 76 sort of maybe being at E3. And then during the Bethesda conference, um, we got sort of an actual trailer and all that kind of stuff for Fallout 76. Now, basically the storyline from the conference and what Todd Howard said was that it's going to be based upon everything that happens before all the Fallout games. So it's going to be a prequel to all the games that we currently have out already. Um, it's going to be about the first Fallout shelter that was ever opened called Fallout 76 in the year 2076. Um, most people are not wanting to sort of get behind this game and get hyped for it, mainly because they think that it is not going to be a single player game and that it is going to be sort of like an MMO, sort of how uh, Bethesda went on to make Elder Scrolls Online and how me personally, I don't really like the storyline. Um, it's a bit repetitive just to do every race having the same storyline. So I don't really, you know, find joy in playing that game but basically the way that fallout 76 is going to work is that there is no npcs whatsoever by what todd howard said every sort of player model that you're going to run into apart from like mobs and enemies are going to be players um there's base building and there's also a new sort of game mechanic uh to where you have to find these launch codes and then if you get the full five digits of the launch code i believe it is you can launch a nuke on a specific area of the map now me personally i don't see a big use for this 
but it seems like it could be an interesting game mechanic. And it seems that from what Todd Howard said, that once you launch a nuke and it lands, it makes um, new materials and stuff that you can mine from that area. And it also, you can use it as sort of a, a way of warfare and you can destroy people's bases, which I think is pretty cool. Um, now the fourth PC game is called Transference. Again, I do not know much about this game particularly. All I know is it's, they said it was going to be a VR game, um, all the way from PlayStation VR all up to a uh, high-end VR. So like PC, Vive, Oculus, stuff like that. Um, again, I don't really know much about this game. So I guess from the trailer, you can try to pick out what you like about the game or maybe what you dislike. Um, and then the last, the last PC game that I have on this list that I'm going to be getting for PC is Dying Light 2. Now I have the first game and I realized that probably doing a playthrough of the first game would probably help out at least a little bit for you know the story for the second game. Um, however, when I played through a little bit, about probably half of the first game, I didn't really find that much interest in it. Um, I kind of got bored halfway through and I just kind of stopped playing. Um, that happens with a lot of games, uh, especially if I don't find interest in them. I just don't really see, you know, a reason to keep playing them. So that does it for the PC sort of list, I guess. Um, now continuing on to my PS4 section of this list. We had the uh, new trailer for Kingdom Hearts 3. I believe it was the third trailer. And it announced that you could play in the Pirates of the Caribbean world, which looks absolutely incredible. Um, the graphics from Kingdom Hearts 3 compared to the older games obviously is much, much bigger step up. Um, and there's actually a package on the PlayStation Store that you can get that includes every single... Um, I guess story game that was released for consoles. So um, Kingdom Hearts was remastered and is now 1.5. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 2 was remastered and is now 2.5. And then there's a 2.8, I believe. And then um, basically, if you get that package, you get uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 and preload it, and then you'll get it when it releases. Uh, I don't really know much about even the Kingdom Hearts sort of storyline and all that kind of stuff mainly because I only played a little bit of the first and second game I never really got into it because at that time I was a lot younger and I couldn't really understand the storyline and stuff behind it but yeah uh, let me know if you guys would like me to play some Kingdom Hearts the next on the PS4 list is The Last of Us Part 2 now we got a brand new tr gameplay trailer actually for Last of Us Part 2 at E3 um, from the Sony conference uh, by Naughty Dog, and it looks insane. Um, the gameplay mechanics compared to the first game, although I haven't played it, I've seen playthroughs of it, looks incredibly, you know, like a higher quality basically than uh, the first part. So I also realized the same thing with Kingdom Hearts and Dying Light. I would probably have to do a playthrough of the older games, which I am completely fine with. If you guys want to see a Last of Us playthrough, um, I'd be down to do that. Now, the third game on my PS4 list is Marvel Spider-Man. Now, we got a brand new sort of look at the Sony conference as well into this game. I have been following almost everything on this game, and... I'm honestly really excited for it. Uh, it sort of reminds me of the old days of Spider-Man 2, and a lot of people think that that's the best Spider-Man game ever. And honestly, I think that uh, Marvel Spider-Man is going to top that, mainly for the reason that they put so much time into it, and it's not a movie tie-in, so the acting is not going to be incredibly horrible. And we're going to have, you know, better graphics, 
um, subpar to what we're used to now. And I think it's just going to be amazing. But hopefully you guys agree. And honestly, if you guys don't want to see this game on the channel, I might either play it off, like not while or not on screen, or I might just you know record it anyways and see what you guys think. Um, the fourth game on the PS4 list is Resident Evil 2 Remake. Now, we didn't get much for this game at E3. Uh, we got sort of just a little snippet. Um, I th believe that the main character that you're going to be playing as is Leon from the Resident Evil franchise. And I played probably the first five minutes of RE2 on my PSP when I got it uh, probably like two years ago. And I wasn't really a big fan, mainly because the control scheme uh, for the older games was pretty bad, and the camera movement was really bad. But the Resident Evil 2 remake is basically, it's a whole remake. So basically they're making it into sort of our standards today. It's going to be an over-the-shoulder sort of third-person shooter. Sort of like uh, if you guys have ever played Resident Evil 4, it's going to be much like that. And yeah, so hopefully you guys would you know, like to see any of these games that I've sort of listed so far. Now the last game that is going to be on this list that nobody knows any information on is the new Star Wars game. Now, I believe it was at the EA conference. One of the sort of, I guess, announcer ladies did an interview with um, basically a dev from Respawn uh, Games. And he said that they were working on a new Star Wars game called Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Now, she asked the question if we would be able to play as a Jedi and wield a lightsaber in the game, obviously because it's Jedi Fallen Order. And he said that yes, and he can't honestly tell us anything about the game, which was, you know, much understood. But I'm really excited for that game because hopefully it will be a new single player story driven game because we know that EA is no longer really going to be working on those. They said that they have no interest in making any more single player story games and that they're focusing more on, um, I guess, sort of like multiplayer games like uh, Battlefront and stuff like that, which, you know, I'm fine with, but, uh, you know, single player games are honestly a lot better, especially for console and stuff like that. But yeah, so if the game comes to PC, I'll mostly likely be getting that for PC. I don't really see myself getting a Star Wars game for console. Um, but yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you guys have any questions or anything like that, go ahead and leave it down in the comments section below. And if you guys want to see any of these games, um, just sort of leave a comment below and Tell me what games you would like to see, and I guess the most wanted game, um, I will pre-order it and then uh, play it when it comes out. So yeah, I uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.